What was the most spectacular sight uh, on the on the Apollo flight? You know, every every sight in space is spectacular. I mean, you just can never look out the window without being amazed at what you see. And I hope that technology will allow more and more people to go and see those sites and see our planet. It's a beautiful place, or particularly when you see it from a distance. It's mm. a magnificent sight. Uh, but the most beautiful sight, as we were approaching the moon, and I'd say maybe we're five, 7,000 miles out, pretty close. <laughs> we flew into the moon shadow, which means that from our point of view, the moon was eclipsing the sun. So we would see the, the dark gray moon and behind it, the corona of the sun coming out all around. It was a lovely sight. And now we were close enough that the, the moon wasn't a disk as, as we see it from here on Earth. It looks pretty flat to us from here. But it was a big, it was clearly three-dimensional, a ball. And it was covered with ridges and craters and valleys and hills and all manner. Of, and, and that was decidedly, it was, it was in the dark, but it was being illuminated by the light of Earth. Now, because Earth is, as you know, 16 times bigger in area than the, than the, uh, than the moon, and it's also more reflective. So consequently, it's substantial. Earth light is substantially brighter than moonlight at the same distance. And because of the oceans, that light is decidedly blue light is blue. So we were looking at this, this three-dimensional ball with all these valleys and ridges and craters and things were falling. It was, and it was illuminated by blue earth light and we were flying toward it faster and falling faster and getting closer and getting faster. I thought it was the most beautiful sight I'd ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Clinging on. <laughs> now, you can't sit in any kind of a machine and accelerate seven or 8,000 miles an hour without you suspecting that something's going on. But you see, it was at night. We were on the night side of the Earth over Africa, and we couldn't see, and you just couldn't get an appreciation of what it was that was happening. But as we came out into daylight over Indonesia, we could see, and it was spectacular. We were ascending from the Earth at a, a rate of, you know, something like going outward at 5,000 miles an hour or 7,000 miles an hour, something like that. But from our point of view, we just seemed like we were motionless, and the Earth was sinking away from us. And we could see more and more of the horizon, the Pacific out there, the Gulf, Gulf the uh, Indian Ocean, Malaysia. All of a sudden, the whole, we could see the whole, whole sphere, a great, gigantic blue ball covered with a white lace of clouds and it was just sinking further and further away, sort of into that inky black sky. <laughs> I said to myself, boy, this time you might have just gone and done it. <laughs> In regards to the computer, we were, we were chatting about this. Um, uh, on the actual Apollo, uh, the, the landing module, the, the whole process, how powerful a computer did you have? How, in today's terminology, how, how powerful would you say it was? Well, it was not as good as a laptop, but it was probably a little better than a handheld. It, it actually had 
Uh, I mean, some of you that are computer nerds. Uh, He's a pilot. He's not a nerd. You know, you you <laughs> you you got to have gigs and uh, that kind of stuff. And we didn't have gigs or even megs. <laughs> Our, the the uh, the uh, Apollo computer had 32K of fixed memory and 2K of erasable. That's, that was it. No screen, no sound, no icons, no, no nothing. Just, it, and the, the keyboard just had, oh, I, it had zero through 10, read, clear, and enter. I think it might have been one or two more keys. <laughs> We, we had no, no graphics, no screen, no. Uh, on its best days, it couldn't get to one megahertz. <laughs> so it was slow and weak, but it got its there. Hey, baby. Hey, back. Yeah. Last one from me. I got a question for me. I want, there's one thing I want to know. There's one thing I want to know since the day you agreed to come. And uh, as I mentioned to you, we live on a house, top of a hill, and we get so many great views of the sky at night. And here's the question that's just been, every time I go home and I see the moon, this is the question I've been wanting to ask you. It's a crystal clear November evening, little nip in the air. It's just as clear as can be. And you're driving home, and you get out of your car, and you look up like that. And you see this, this image like this, okay? Um, what, what comes to your mind? What, what, jumps to your, what jumps to your mind? Girls. <laughs> A little bit to the, the Apollo goal, which you all talked about earlier in, in the day and yeah. so on. The nice thing about that goal was that it was so simple and understandable. Oh. Get a, go to send a man to the moon, return him safely to Earth by the end of the decade. I mean, everything you needed to know was oh. there. And that's, it, I think it's a great advantage when goals can be stated in such a way that they're not ambiguous and you know exactly what it is you're trying to do. Um, and that was a model for me. I've never been as good at doing that for myself as uh, Jack Kennedy did for, for our, our program. But um, the important thing to me, and I, I think probably to many here, is that you want to make a mark. You'd like to leave the world a little better than when you came. That's my goal. Well.